so with this uh, multiple integration device you uh, completed your thesis problems yeah my thesis problem and uh, with that you you yeah. had so you submitted that for a phd for a phd and you got your phd from university of bombay bombay university of bombay at the time of course the tfr was getting its degree from, from the university, university of bombay. bombay so this was and 1979 1979 and i believe there was another very important event in your life that happened in 1979 <laughs> yes that is true that is the year i got married also <laughs> very nice so <laughs> then you went to princeton uh, immediately Indeed, after immediately after yes ma'am. okay you went you the years that you spent in princeton were uh, nine, uh, one year in princeton 19 i think 1979 and then probably one year in uh, university of illinois urbana champaign 1980 81 okay and my wife could uh, not join it when i went to princeton but she joined when i went to illinois because i mean she was carrying my first daughter yeah good so you you were in princeton 80 81 yes okay and uh, you met the murthy brothers in princeton yeah or? in fact yeah my princeton life was one of the very interesting one i mean this is an opportunity for you to talk to So uh, stalwarts like Professor Selber or Bombiri, and I also had uh, many good friends like particularly Professor Ramurthy and James Hafner and so on, and Viola also from Italy, and uh, it was really an enjoyable period in my life. So you you met uh, Professor Ramurthy at Princeton, or you had already? Yeah, no, met? actually, yeah, yeah. I should really say that I met him at Princeton, even though. it is true they visited tata institute a couple of years earlier and we had a discussion but the discussion was probably for an hour or so and uh, i don't have much of an impression but uh, spending one year in princeton with ramurthy we became very close friends so did you work uh, on your yeah exactly i mean this a there was a problem okay there's a estimate by delin that about tauven is less than 2 mar tau p is less than 2 times we were 11 over 2 and which would give you essentially that mar tauven is less than n power 11 over 2 times the divisor function of n and divisor function can be written as exponential constant times log n by log log n. so this is of course the famous the, tau the, function of yeah. ramanujan no, this is a famous tau function of ramanujan yeah. not told us what tau is yes, <laughs> yes. so what is tau n it's a function introduced yeah, tau by is ramanujam it will introduce by ramanujam which is essentially defined by tau of u is q into product 1 minus 1 over q power n raised to the power 24 n equal to 1 to infinity and delin delin 1 minus q 1 minus q power n yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. q into product 1 minus q power n power 24 and equal to 1 to infinity and delin very famously proved, very famously uh, proved the conjecture as a consequence of wells conjectures yes yeah the bound for tau p tau tau p from which from the, and tau. multiplicativity and things yeah, like exactly. this properties of tau you can get the bound for tau n tau n which was uh, the bound you just mentioned yes and what was the question the you question studied is with yes, ramurthy really, what about the other way then you want to say that for infinitely many n tau n is bigger than n power 11 over 2 or even slightly bigger n power 11 over 2 times something and that's the problem in which i was interested with the professor ramurthy and we worked on the problem and you should also admit here that we got a generous help from professor selberg on attacking this problem and with that we were able to finish the problem which appeared in inventory and that and then professor ramurthy continued the things and assuming satotate because at the time satotate was not proved he was able to prove assuming satotate he was able to prove a little much, a little more than what we were able to prove so this was your uh, uh, paper yes, with yeah, ramurthy yes. on oscillations of the values of ramanujan yes, tau function but at this point you had already become interested in the wearing problem right well oh, yeah yeah in fact uh, Yeah, in fact, before. even before going to Princeton, I was interested. In the way. Ah, what happened was once I finished these two problems, this uh, mean square or the estimates of the Riemann zeta function, 
Then Ramachandra said, there is another problem in which I have been interested. Why not you try with Joseph Varick's problem? And then I worked on the Varick's problem. And uh, you see, okay, probably I should explain what a Varick's problem is. You know, it's a celebrated theorem of Lagrange that every integer can be written as sum of four squares. And uh, following that, uh, Varick conjectured that every integer is a sum of nine cubes, 19 biquadrats, and so on. I mean, it was probably very clear when he was able to write the 9 and 19, he probably knew what are, should be the other powers, but anyway, he didn't. He just wrote 9 cubes and 19 biquadrats. And uh, therefore, you have to prove it's big lesson after 19. And I think at that time when I was, when I was working on that, there was this uh, article by, I think, thesis work by Thomas, who proved that the number is at most 23. You want to prove it's 19, it's at most 23. And then I was able so to So, what the question was to show that every integer, integer can be written as a sum of... The sum of at most 23 fourth powers. That was what G.B. Thomas... Uh, no, what was his name? I've forgotten. I don't know. Uh, what yeah. Thomas? Thomas. He was a student of Montgomery's. Is it? Yeah, no, he was a student of Montgomery's. Yeah. Yeah. Then I just proved uh, 22. And then I proved 21. And that is all before I went to Princeton. And then what happened after Princeton is probably should come chronologically a little later. Okay, so already Waring's problem was on your plate. On, on your way plate. Okay. Yes. And then you went to Princeton, you worked with Ram Murthy yes. on oscillations of okay. values of tau. Yes. N, and you returned by 82. I returned by, I mean, after spending a year in. Uh, Illinois. In Illinois, I returned. So about yeah, Illinois life was also very interesting. And I think uh, Professor Heidi Halberstam was a HOD. And then I, I met there Brian Country, and then I met Zanier, Mrutha Zanier, <coughs> and it was very nice. And Heath Brown. Heath Brown. So this was the time also you began working with uh, Conry and Heath Brown. Conry and Heath Brown, yes. So you returned to Tata Institute in 83? I returned probably 1982. Yeah, I returned in 82, I think. Okay. Yeah, and to, because I think that's the year I got my promotion to readership. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Right. So you were in the Tata Institute at that time, but very shortly after that, you went away to math science. Ah, yeah, exactly. Okay. What happened was, K. Professor Seshadri moved to the Institute of Mathematical Sciences. I think it's in probably 1984 or so. And he was trying to recruit people to go there. And with an explicit purpose of recruiting people once he visited uh, Tata Institute. And then he called me and I went there. And then he asked me whether I would be willing to come to Chennai. And uh, I thought it's a good idea. And then I did, just decided to go with him. So this will be in 1984. Late 1984. Late 1984. So late 1984, you left TIFR to yes. move to the Institute of Mathematical Sciences, yes. Chennai, where you basically remained till till the, my retirement and even today. Even today, yes. Okay. So that's uh, you spent almost four four decades there. Yes. Uh, nice. So, you moved to TA Math Science yeah. and you continued to work on Waring's problem. Yeah. That was among other things. Yeah. So, when did your uh, G419... Uh, yeah, okay. Then you see, I proved... Okay, <coughs> what happened was, I was attacking the problem from only one angle. I mean, I was trying to improve the estimate to, for, in one aspect. Namely, to getting a good constant in the Wales inequality for the fourth powers. But that alone is really not sufficient. I mean, that will not give you the thing because then you have to check the validity for a long range, which was not definitely possible at that time. Meantime, this way and Dress were working on the problem purely from a different angle, namely the same, put, uh, having yeah, uh, probabilistic model, which is one area with which this way is like one of the great experts of putting a probabilistic model. 
at that time ramachandra was visiting for a conference i don't know exactly where where this way was also there and then ramachandra was explaining that balu has is attacking on this problem and this way i was interested and then this way got this paper and then found that my improvement in one angle and his improvement in a different angle combined together would finally solve the problem this is this way and dress this way and dress and that's exactly what happened and that's how the final paper came So that resolved wearing long standing conjecture about fourth power. Fourth. Of course the higher powers higher powers were already been, known and yeah. of course one should say that the higher powers the indian contribution is very high yeah, yeah. But probably in a it's different, different context i will talk about that yeah yes. pillai rugubunde there's there were many also, people also previously mentioned that you got a lot of help doing oh, the yeah. calculations for wearing yeah power. exactly i can that i should tell you I was working on the problem. You see, I was trying to use this. Uh, I, I was uh, trying to improve the Wales estimate. Imp- not improve the Wales estimate. I mean, improve the Wales. Uh, Wales estimate is the best, of course, when n goes to infinity. But in the in intermediate range of n, probably you may have a better estimate if you do your uh, Cauchy-Schwarz carefully. and in order to do the cauchy schwarz carefully i have to construct a function f remember this is somewhere around 1980s or so and i have not even seen a computer at that time and therefore all the calculations have to be done by a packet pocket calculator and then you know for all these difficult calculations doing it by a packet calculator is how difficult it is anyway i worked on that for maybe four or five days to get a general form of how the f will look like and then i more or less concluded that the probably some the choice like f of n equal to n power beta into product p dividing n 1 minus p power minus 2 beta power half may be a good choice of this but then the beta who has to be chosen for every different ranges appropriately which means more or less trial and error never in which by that you have to go to the packet calculator try the various values of beta and calculate all those things and try to see which is the best estimate that you are getting but already after this calculation of even getting the proper format of f i was tired and i was even thinking of uh, i mean dropping the problem i mean because it was the calculations in the packet calculator was not so much which i enjoyed but then fortunately my wife told okay don't bother about this calculations in the packet calculator even though i don't even understand what varings problem is and how are you doing it but if this cal- some calculation of certain functions have to be done in a packet calculator this is something which i can do and then she did all the calculations for the various values of beta which he enabled me to choose the correct beta in the for the proof so she she studied bsc mathematics no 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 she is ba geography so with this your wearing's problem had uh, come to an end yes. the g419 one of the remarkable results uh, proved in india yeah and with you know indian collaboration yeah i remember that was how i uh it came to know you i was in school at that time and i saw you were covered in the illustrated weekly yes you got a center page cover mm. so that's how i learned and even the hindu and yeah. so on yeah. so yeah so you mentioned of course your marriage and then the help you got from your wife on uh, the wearing problem but you also mentioned very briefly in passing the existence of a first daughter yes. after that we okay. don't know much you know, about your family yeah so I mean uh, yeah my wife first of all has been extremely supportive without which i could not have done anything at all and she really took care, takes care of the home and not giving me any burden and even in the growing of the children etc she played the major role and uh, and besides helping very what is small percentage in mathematics and uh, then i have a son uh, i have a son and a daughter my daughter is younger and uh, she is a 
she is teaching computer science. My son in law is also teaching computer science. And I, so, this is in Stony Brook? This is in Stony Brook. And I have a granddaughter, the, <coughs> the princess of the family, Lila. <laughs> and my son is an engineer. And I have a lovely daughter in law, Neha. Therefore, I mean, from the domestic things, I am, I am really blessed in every respect. But around the same time, I imagine Soundarajan also probably learned. He was a young student. But he was also Tarun Yeah, we should be around <coughs> the same little, time. Exactly. Little after, little after, little maybe after three, four years after. Uh, two, three years. Yeah, after, yeah. yeah. So, 1987 or 88? 88. 88, yes. 88. I met you in 87. Yeah. Uh, he probably met. So he was a young uh, school student school. at that time. Now yes. he is, of course, a very well-established professor at Stanford and everything, one of the leading number theorists in the world. So, uh, he came to meet you yes. uh, as a school child. Uh, and you subsequently worked with him on uh, a very uh, interesting combinatorial number Pro theoretic conjecture of yes, uh, Graham. Exactly. Graham's conjecture. So, this was a <coughs> very nice paper, pretty long paper in yes. Acta Arithmetica yes. where you solved Yes. Graham's conjecture along with uh, Soundarajan. Yes. So, how did that come about? Did you… Uh, yeah, but I can even tell a little more about Soundarajan and… Uh, anyway, I was in Chennai and he was in Chennai and uh, of course, I didn't know he existed and he, he didn't know I exist. But then it so happened that uh, Professor Desue was visiting, I think probably 1988 or something like that, the first visit to India. And then he was giving a lecture in, in Yakampraniwas, which is the residence of Aladdin Ramakrishnan. And uh, lo looking at an advertisement in the newspaper Hindu, then Saudar Rajan went for that lecture. And then they were, and then uh, he asked uh, this way, I mean, how does he go about? He is interested in number theory, how does he go about? And this way suggested my name. And therefore, he came and met me. And that's how it started. And at that particular time, already I think he had one paper using the silver sieve or something. And then I suggested a problem. I mean, this is for n power n, n power n plus n power n. Okay. So, yeah. The number of primes in a sequence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that certainly he had. Yes. Uh, yeah. He has a paper on that. Yeah. That. And then I suggested a problem. This is a problem which was worked by Alladi, Waller, and uh, L dash, where they proved that if f is a multiplicity function and f of p is rather small, let us say less than one fourth or something like that, and if you are looking at summation L dividing n f of a L, then major contribution will come only from small l because your fp is small and therefore if you have big l that will have a lot of prime factors etc that's the essentially type of result and i suggested the problem to him and then uh, i had i went on vacation probably for four or five days and after four or five days i come back and in the meantime he had solved the problem and uh, seeing that uh, and he has even improved the result and a simpler proof and therefore, I thought I should be able to do something with him. And uh, that is the time we looked at this Graham's conjecture. And uh, there was this result by Zagarasku, who was able to prove the conjecture for all large values of n. And then we wanted to see. And there, essentially, he chooses a prime less than 2n. And he already makes a choice that p will be the biggest prime, which is less than 2n. And it looked to me. <coughs> That if you def definitely, suppose you don't make that choice, that P is the biggest prime less than 2 n. But on the other hand, you have a lot, a family of such P's and then choose the appropriate one. Then probably you should be able to prove Garam's conjecture, even for every value of n. And then we worked on the problem with practically no progress. And then he went abroad to have his undergraduate. Sandarajan went abroad and undergraduate studies in Michigan. After two years, and I was thinking, then he writes me a letter saying that he is able to push that idea and finally solve the problem. 
and that's how we got this paper grams ki picture yeah it's, it was quite a solid thing yes and, and he was just an undergraduate student at that yeah. time so combinatorics of course this is a problem in combinatorics Kavi, practically a problem and this problem has even even not only the problem in the combinatorics see this problem has a lot of graph theoretic connections also hmm. so that's been an area where you work to yeah. uh, with computer scientists for example <laughs> exactly no you yes. have work with uh, venkatesh raman, raman and fellows yes uh, and so on. so and that, some parametrized complexity and so yeah on. so combinatorics then uh, cryptology computer science these are all things you have also done along yeah. with uh, analytic, analytic number yes. theory i mean combinatorics is my one of my favorite things so you you work uh, with uh, koblitz hmm. uh, so you have this algorithm Uh, yeah, isn't, okay, I can. Uh, that's a pretty curious thing because that's applied by biologists also, isn't it? No, this uh, one is. This is not the one with fellows. The one with the para. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 the one with the Vikas Raman. This is for yeah finding the vertex of a certain type in a ah, graph. Yes, What is the algorithm to do that? Ah. That dominating. One, yeah, that's Wait. that has found applications in. Yeah, because that's a nice algorithm. Yes. Okay. So, what about your uh, work with Koblitz? Uh, how is that? Yeah, okay. How does uh, Koblitz work comes? In cryptology, there is something called the discrete log problem, which means essentially you are given a cyclic group, a generator, and another number x, and then this x is of course a power of the generator. You are interested in knowing what power it is, and one can do the brute search, and that will be long time consuming. and therefore you need an algorithm that if you are given the generator and then x and what power of g is that x to do that and for the cyclic group zp star okay there are good algorithms known even though they are not polynomial but they are sub exponential which means that they take the time something like an exponential constant time square root of log b and no such thing is known if you are looking the cyclic group as a part of an elliptic curve defined over fp you you over fp has a very good cyclic subgroup and if you do the your dlp discrete log problem in that cyclic subgroup which is called easy dlp elliptic curve discrete log group the no such reduction is known essentially you know only that brute search and then there was a beautiful idea which came from menesses okamoto and van stone mo algorithm they were able that given any such easy dlp they were able to make it into the ordinary dlp using weil pairing but now defined not necessarily over the ground field fp but over a finite extension now therefore this is therefore sub exponential but not in p but in q which is an extension at the and therefore the sub exponential in q is it really exponential or sub exponential on p that is a question which you could and uh, koblitz was first of all able to, first of all had some very good ideas of how to prove that this way the weil pairing is actually defined over an extension of large degrees normally the extent I mean, the weil pairing will not be defined over an extension of small degree; it will be on a large degree. And he definitely felt that should probably mean that this method is probably not polynomial time for most of the curves, unless the weil pairing already happens to be happening in a small extension. And there was a cryptology conference in Bangalore where uh, Koblitz was giving this lecture, and I was also in the audience where he said. these things i mean this is where therefore this should essentially mean and then after the lecture was over we were walking towards the canteen there for having our lunch and then we were discussing on the way discussing on the way about what he said and after we finished the lunch and came back we more or less found a way of proving whatever he wanted namely that this mov logarithm is most of the time not really a polynomial time algorithm not even yeah not even polynomial not even a sub exponential algorithm it is a much worse algorithm which really happened to be a good news for people who were making crypto products using that because 
then if this could be broken, that would mean essentially their crypto product would have been unsafe. Uh, this was your work with uh, Koblitz yes. in uh, cryptology. Yeah, but combinatorics, of course, you have uh, done uh, many things, especially with the computer scientists. Yeah. And one of your, uh, the most senior of your students, Professor Adhikari. Yes. He, in fact, has an entire school of combinatorial Combinatorial people. number. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, uh, let's now talk about Students, so you've guided a number of students. Yes. So exactly. Do you remember how many students you have? I think around 13 or 14. Yes. That's right. <laughs> to the last, yeah. So that's been, and your first student was not much younger than you. Yes, Kumar Das Adhikari. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yes. when did Adhikari uh, become your student? More or less at the time when I moved to Chennai. Okay. So he joined you there. Yes. And initially, he worked on uh, uh, analytic he, number theoretic questions or combinatorial no, questions? No, no, it was, uh, I think, if you remember correctly, it was more on omega results. Okay. I mean, uh, you see, I have been always interested in omega results, but, uh, you know, my omega, the proof of whatever whatever I did with the omega results was by using analytic methods. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, Again, certain combinatorial method to get an Omega results were developed by Yardash and he was interested in that. And then he was trying to generalize whatever the Yardash method was to get the Omega results. So he continued his interest in those matters then, after For some time, yes. And then of course he moved to additive combinatorics by really combinatorial methods full force. So he, he was at HRI. Throughout his uh, career, yeah. Till, uh, till, till he moved recently. to till he moved Bello, to Bello. Bello. So that was your first student, yes. and your last student also recently. I, uh, the last one to finish was Priyamad. Uh, Priyamad. Priyamad. Priyamad yeah, yes. he he worked on also very interesting topics. Interesting of topic of this. Uh, I mean, trying to do some estimates on. A suggestion made by Help God on the ternary gold work. Mm, yeah, so that I remember looking at the thesis. It was pretty impressive at that point. Yeah. So, 14 students over a span of, let me say, I think 87 onwards? Uh, 87 onwards, because I think 84 Adhikari joined probably would have been. Easy. So, about 30. Yeah, three decades. Yeah, yeah three decades. So it's uh, quite a lot of students and uh, this, but uh, as you were guiding students, of course, uh, at some point you were also quite, you know, you were in the Institute of Mathematical Sciences and at one point you were the senior most faculty member yes. because many people also left to join CMI. Yes, exactly. Uh, professor, after Professor Sashadri left, uh, left, left to left, join left. CMI yes. and then the faculty strength suddenly fell down. Yes. And then again, Math Science started to recruit. Yes. And you had remained at Math Science. Yes. Right. So uh, eventually, then uh, by about 2000, you had become, I very became the senior director of the institute. And you became the director of the institute. And you continued doing that for how many years? I was there only till 2014. 2000 to 2014. 14 years. So, uh, what about, I mean, do you have anything to say? Any interesting? things about your administrative roles as a scientific yeah. Okay, that I can tell. Again, you know, as I was studying about this uh, Ramchandra's help for me for this academic, etc. I think I have been always lucky, lucky in everything. You know, for example, the faculty has been always very nice. I mean, there was no quarrel or anything like that. And uh, they had all understand each other and uh, therefore there is really no problem about anything at all. And even when I want to do something, I mean Professor S.K. Joshi, who was the governing council chairman, would always encourage. And then starting when I, yeah, when I took over as a director, I, uh, I think that's the time Dr. Kakodkar also became the DAE chairman. And from his time onwards, or Banerji or anybody who came later, I mean, the DIE has been extremely helpful. I mean, whatever we wanted, 
they were able to give and we did not run for money or any other things etc and they were with the support from the higher ups and with the full support of the faculty they were doing this director's job was no burden at all in fact it was a pressure it was, i really enjoyed being the director so now for uh, more or less the last question that i have uh, is you have uh, now just sort of briefly ask him about his post retirement in math science when he came to yeah. uh, iit uh, bombay that yeah. is another administrative yeah exactly that he took up. okay and then you see i get this uh, Ra- Rama, Ra- yeah, no, that was Ramanujan professor from the INSA. This is the I became Indian became Indian National Science Indian Academy. Indian National Science Academy, and then I became then uh, yeah, I then I moved to IIT Bombay as the chairman for the National Center for Mathematics, and I was here for two years, and uh, in fact, uh, I enjoyed it so much that I would have. i would have i would have loved to continue that except for the fact that when the covid came and then there were problem about the guest house and there were problems about going to chennai because the flights were not there etc therefore the whole thing became topsy turvy and then i decided that it's not the time and therefore once the covid started i i went back to chennai until the time i was here enjoying my life here very much so to finish what do you think of uh, mathematics in india uh, do you do you see it as a much more hopeful situation now than when you started with only tafr uh, uh, i definitely see a bright future I, exactly as you said that when we i mean in 1980 1970s when i joined tafr and the tafr and the indian uh, indian statistical institute were the only two institutes which were doing good mathematics and the probably there was not much place at all but now you see every place has many top mathematicians indian institute of science bangalore has many lots of icers and most of the icers have many brilliant mathematicians most of the iits have a lot of brilliant mathematicians and even isi okay compared to those years now seems to have a much better crop of people compared to 20 years back and uh, i think there is a really good hope for mathematics now while on that optimistic note i also want to mention that of course you have received several awards over the years yeah both national and international so uh, not of course you were the padma shri yes. yeah, so which year was this i think 2006 and of course i think even before that you had the award from the french government yeah chevalier 2000 lord de mary yes yeah okay that was 2000 2000 are there any other significant uh... yeah the lifetime achievement award from the department of atomic energy and uh, the interesting point is that uh, it was given by the, the then prime minister of india science awards themselves you have received the batnagar but and your fellow of fellow the academies along with you the scene in mathematics uh, in india changed yeah exactly yes i mean that they really changed for the better i mean yeah. more people now and has changed very considerably and uh, you have lived through that yes. experience so it was quite interesting to listen to your description of things thank you again thank you thank you thank you, thank you.